Today's video is taking this vintage marketplace find and turning it into this chic set. Hello, welcome back. I was so excited to start on this project. I completely forgot to take a detailed before video. This is a set of vintage dining chairs I found off Facebook Marketplace. It's a set of six for $30. You can see that someone attempted to flip a couple of them and I just start by disassembling, taking the seats and the backs off. Next, I give everything a thorough cleaning. This is a homemade mixture of vinegar and water. Just spray the surface down thoroughly thoroughly and wipe it clean. Once it is clean, I do come back with a damp rag and give it a rinse to get all the cleaner off. And then I let all of that air dry. On a couple of the bamboo backs, you can see that some of the pieces are missing. So I, there's two that are broken. So I'm going to cut some of the bamboo away and make those two pieces match. I then filled the holes that were remaining from the pieces that I removed with wood filler. If you are new to the channel, here I like to take old worn down furniture and sometimes other people's furniture flips and give them a whole new look. So make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Some of the twine had come undone, so I used wood glue and rewrapped it and then used a clamp and let that set overnight. And the last and final repair I have, I use this E6000, it is industrial strength glue. I just put some glue on there and hammered that little piece, the end piece back into place and let all the repairs sit overnight. The fabric seats on this set is stains and just dingy looking. This is some new fabric that I found at Hobby Lobby. When you are upholstering seats, you need to make sure to wash and dry your fabric. I'm not sure if everyone does that or not, but the lady who showed me how to work with fabric and to sew and reupholster, that was the very first thing that she taught me. After you wash and dry, you want to go ahead and iron out all the wrinkles in your fabric. It will just look nicer in the end and you won't have any seams. Then you place your piece, so this is one of the cushions, on the fabric, making sure to leave plenty of room. And I just cut a big square out. You always want to go bigger than smaller because you can cut off the excess fabric. If you cut your piece too small, then you have less options to fix that. I flip the fabric over, flip the cushion over, and then check its location to make sure it is centered in the middle. Now this is a pattern. Just so you know, patterns like this are a little bit more difficult to start with, so maybe go with a solid color. With patterns, you have to make sure that you have them set up correctly. So I do a staple on all four sides, and then I flip it over to check my placement to make sure my pattern isn't going off in a crazy direction. Then I use my staple gun to go around all four sides, tugging and stapling, and then using the hammer to knock in any staples that don't get in all the way. And I do that on all four sides and I save the corners for last. The corners are the tricky part. I take time here to work with the fold to get a nice fold on each corner. And then I add about three or four staples to hold it into place. Corners come eventually. They are a little bit hard, but with a little bit of practice, you'll kind of get to where you get a nice smooth edge on the corners as well. After you're done stapling everything down, use some scissors to trim your remaining fabric that's left over. And then here you go. All right, the seat cushions are finished. So I set my intentions on getting the chair backs and the bases done. I used some 120 grit sandpaper to sand my wood filled holes smooth and then grab a super fine grade sanding sponge and my surf prep sander to sand the rest of the chair back and the chair bases. I highly recommend scuff sanding all surfaces that you're going to prime just to give that primer a little bit more grit to hold on to. After sanding, you want to wipe away the dust residue with a damp lint-free cloth and then let everything air dry. Okay. 
I am using this Rust-Oleum Clear for a primer on the metal bases. There are still a few spots of rust, so I'm using that to keep the rust locked in. For the chair backs, I am using Zinsser's Bullseye 123 Water Base Primer. I'm going to spray this through my 3M AccuSpray gun. So I water the formula down and spray. I do two coats on the back of the chair backs, and then I do two coats on the front and allowing at least an hour of dry time between each coat. And here is what the chair backs look like all primed up. All right, moving right along to paint. For the chair bases, I wanna give this a fresh gold color. So I'm using Rust-Oleum. It is my favorite spray paint to use on metal and this is their metallic gold. I do three coats on the chairs, upside down and then the right side, and this is what the chair bases now look like after three coats of paint. For the chair backs, I like to use chalk paint. This is bare chalk paint, and this color is Venus Teal, so it's a nice vintage teal color. I also spray this through my gun, so I water it down a little bit as well, and do three coats on the back, three coats on the front and let all the paint set overnight. The next day, I used a super fine grit sanding sponge to lightly go over the surface and then blew the dust away with my air nozzle. For protection, I am using Bear's water-based polyurethane in the gloss finish. I have never used this product. It's my first time using it. I usually use a different top coat, but I'm having a hard time finding it, so I figured to give I would give this one a try. I did three coats on the chair backs and the chair bases. It does say it's fast drying on it, and I have to say that it actually did dry pretty fast, and I'm pretty happy with this product. After the top coat was dry, it is time to put these back together. So I just put the cushion into place, make sure I like where it's at, put the screws back on, and then attach the backs. When you go to put your pieces back together, keeping the original nuts and bolts all together is a nice pro tip. So I always put my screws and stuff in a Ziploc bag or an old tub of wear, and it just makes assembly when you're done a lot easier, not having to chase or track anything down. For the bottoms of the chair, I didn't want them to scratch the floor, so I went ahead and added some felt pads for the bottom, and these pieces are done. I always like to take a look back at the beginning. These old worn out chairs now look like these modern chic pieces. I love the bright gold frame, the funky pattern of the seats, the nice vintage teal color matches the fabric just perfectly. I have to say that I think the chair backs are my absolute favorite. Here is a full regular one. And then here is one of the ones where I took off a few of the pieces. It doesn't really look that much different. I don't think it changes the look at all of the chair. I think these would look wonderful in any retro, vintage, or even modern dining room. I hope you guys enjoy this flip. That's all I have for today. Until next time.